All right, well, Queensland, they've allowed irrigation farmers to pump water from rivers flowing for the first time in years in the state, and New South Wales isn't happy. New South Wales Water Minister Belinda Pavey has asked her Queensland counterpart Anthony Lynham to revoke the permissions. Well, joining me now, Sky News host Peter Gleeson in Brisbane, and the Daily Telegraph columnist Tim Blair is in New South Wales, coming to me via Skype. Man, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, it's a bit of a state of origin over water at the moment. At Gleeson, <laughs> it does make sense uh, for farmers that have a river at the bottom of their property, they see it run past, it's full of water, to say, well, why can't we have some water? But you can understand the argument in New South Wales, because they are in great part still in drought, and they're having to send a lot of their water south to South Australia for environmental gains. This is, a, this is the water mm. fight that we've been having now for centuries. Yeah, and I think, you know, that state of origin sort of analogy is a good one. And I think it's pretty cheeky, I must say, for Queenslanders to be, to be doing that. Melinda Pavey, I think, has probably got a good point. But what I think this does demonstrate, Peter, unquestionably is that the you know the uh, Queensland governments for many many years for 30 or 40 years have been asleep at the wheel when it comes to the provision of proper dams and irrigation facilities for the state of Queensland and we're in the in the grip of a drought uh, luckily we've had a lot of rain in the last sort of 24 to 48 hours which is obviously helping but the fact we haven't built a dam in Queensland in 30 years, they're playing silly buggers with the Paradise Dam up there around Rocky. The Nathan Dam has been on the books for years. Uh, they've come up with all these environmental uh, obstacles like snails and wombats and whatever else you want to throw into the mix. And I think that is the real story here, Peter, and that is the fact that we've been asleep at the wheel. Politicians have been asleep at the wheel when it comes to the proper provision of dams in this state. And that's why they're taking these extraordinary steps of basically pinching the water from uh, their New South Wales colleagues. Well, Tim Blair, you're really good at calling out stuff that just doesn't pass the pub test, where it lacks common sense. I made the point there with Trudy. How on earth do we take water away from the drought minister as if they're somehow diametrically opposed? Common sense tells you one in the same. Important, let's leave it with the same bloke. But in all of that too, this whole fight we've got about the Paradise Dam, how is it in a country like Australia, a state like Queensland, where they're in flood one minute and drought the next, why we would take the decision, and it's being passed through the parliament tonight as we speak, to cut back the capacity of a dam. It doesn't make any sense at all, Peter. And uh, But we see this throughout. Sadly, it's not just Queensland. We had an explanation from uh, the Victorian Premier uh, last year that the reason they weren't building any new dams was because there wasn't enough water, because there was a drought. But work out the maths there. Now, as, as for splitting water and drought, ministries, making them, putting them under separate separate ministers. It reminds me a lot of uh, a, a possibly apocryphal story. Uh, one of the papers in the US on the West Coast sent someone to cover the arrival of the Titanic in New York, and they were bewildered when the guy didn't file a word when the, the thing didn't arrive. And his explanation was, I'm here to cover arrivals. This, the boat didn't <laughs> arrive. You need, you need to get the guy who's a, a specialist in, in icebergs and sinkings. That's what they've done. They've divided up two connected things and decided they're, uh, they're, they're polar opposites. They've nothing to do with each other. Ridiculous. Yeah, you're spot on there. Uh, I want to get another issue because uh, this is just blatant union membership vote buying. I tell you, New Greens leader Adam Bant, well, he wants to impose a billion dollar levy on coal, gas and oil producers. And he wants to do it so he can double the paid firefighting force in Australia. Pay them more. Well, who are they? They're unionised firefighters. And down in Victoria, mm. there was one hell of a stoush over the last sort of two, two, two to three years between the volunteer firefighters and the paid firefighters. Now, the Greens are opportunistic. I think they want to take on some of this membership into their ranks. But, Claire, so this, is, this has got to be seen for what it is. And mm. I have to tell you, if you look at the balance sheet, uh, coal, gas, oil, they pay billions and billions of dollars in taxes mm. now. Adam Band has just become Australia's most dangerous politician. I'm all for paying firefighters more. I think we should actually come up with a scheme where our volunteer firefighters are you know, not out of pocket when they uh, get out and fight fires. But you know what, I, I've been thinking about this Greens mob and, and I actually think that the Labor Party you know, and their alliance with the Greens, the LNP have been very slack in not prosecuting the argument that basically you know, the Greens are now a wholly owned subsidiary of the Labor Party. I'd love the Greens to be in, in government for 
three years. And then just, you know, we'd see the result, they'd send the country broke, and then we'd never have to worry about the Greens again. I mean, these harebrained schemes from from uh, the Greens and, and Bant and, you know, sort of uh, imp imposing massive, massive taxes on big business and, you know, their offshore detention policies, crazy stuff. Uh, this, again, is just a naked, outright, transparent grab for, for some sort of union uh, uh, funding. So, you know, as I said, the nexus between the Labor Party and the Greens is there. The LNP doesn't prosecute it. They rely on upon each other. And, and they have the hide to suggest that uh, the LNP uh, is, is being naughty in jumping into bed with Pauline Hanson and getting her preferences. It's outrageous. Yeah, and look, Tim, beyond what I said before about this being a union membership drive by, by the Greens, let's not forget that the majority of bush fire fighting is done by volunteers. So this is about mm. money going into yes. the urban fire brigade. There's nothing to do with bushfires. The way he cage, cages it today, couches it in, in terms of bushfires and hitting coal, nasty old mm. coal, to fix yeah. the issues we've had over summer, we'll never do the to 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 twain meet here because this is about, as I said, urban firefighters. And if the Greens were serious, they'd actually be out there backing hazard reduction burns. That's the best thing they Correct. could do for, for bushfire prevention, Tim. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Adam Betts really uh, hit the ground running, hasn't he, as leader? I like how he's, he's talking all the time these days about how Australia needs a Green New Deal, which is an idea he's catched. <laughs> from a 30-year-old Congress uh, representative in the US, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's been in politics for exactly 65 weeks. That, she's now, like, basically, she, she's the, 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 an extra um, guiding light with Greta Thunberg for the Greens' overall agenda. Well done, Adam. You're really picking from the, the top of the tree there, son. All right, now, just before we go, uh, David Littleproud uh, says he's not going to, you know, get in the way. Well, actually, I don't think he has technically ruled out a challenge against Michael, Michael McCormack. But they're all saying, you know, nothing to see here, move on, we're all united. But interestingly, mm -hmm. when they're all united and Michael McCormack says he's safe, he still wants now changes to the rules, Peter Gleeson, so that he cannot yeah. be challenged in this term of parliament. Yeah, the old Rudd rule, uh, the rule that's been brought in also by the Liberal Party where they need uh, uh, at least 75% of the members to, to vote for a change. Look, um, <clears throat> you know, I noticed the ministry reshuffle. This was jobs for the boys. I really like Keith Pitt. He's a he's very capable, tremendous politician, knows his stuff. But obviously there were deals done. And he's essentially taken over the portfolio of Matt Canavan, who I think is probably uh, the Nationals' best performer. No love lost, interestingly, Peter, between uh, Matt Canavan and Keith Pitt. I think there's a bit of schadenfreude that's come in there. Uh, Pitt will be very happy that he's assumed that particular portfolio. And you can expect, as you mentioned with Trudy, that there'll be a big debate in the next uh, 12 to 18 months on the value of nuclear power and whether or not nuclear power is an option to, uh, to, to add to, uh, you know, coal-fired power stations and uh, coal-fired yeah, Provided, power provided, and provided, renewables. provided, when someone gets ministerial leather under their backside, they're just as brave as they are when they're on the back bench. We'll see if he carries that over. True. Well, yeah. I have seen that uh, fall away in the past. Tim Blair, Peter Gleeson, thanks very much for your time tonight.